thing you're really passionate about is this idea of proof texts in the scripture where you can't take a singular uh, scripture out of context and say, well, this proves my theology. I can tell you what to do as a leader. Or I look at this. You're not supposed to be acting like this, pastor. I can rebel against you. Yeah. Either way, that the scripture holds each other in tension. Yes. That there is a tension here that it's not saying one way or another, like, you know, a pastor can be a tyrant and it's not saying that a congregant can just like not listen to anyone, yeah. but there's a dynamic of really of, yeah, there's a mutual thing. There's a mutual dynamic thing going on that leaders aren't bossy, but followers aren't rebellious, contentious complainers that you see men of integrity and you choose to follow them. You see precious people to God that are his images that you take care of. And it's, the, the beautiful yes. integration of both of those admonishments, and you can't take one without the other. And I think part of the issue here that it really comes down to is our definition of these things and our understanding of how churches ought to operate. And I think that is actually what creates a lot of the issues because we ha- we're not very literate in these subjects. And so it causes people that are under which they shouldn't they should be over right so an elder is supposed to come under to lift up the church yes but so many times people feel under or dominated uh by this church leadership and so it's the natural tendency to be like man i don't feel good about this yeah because you are sensing something true it's not supposed to be like that yeah that when that this isn't some a, a elder, which is what we use the word pastor often for elder, but it, an elder wasn't meant to be something that's elevated among, above people, but it's someone who basically holds together the congregation on a horizontal plane. So you have in Ephesians 5 right here, 19, it says, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making music in your hearts to the Lord. So it's talking about this this joy, this singing together, always giving thanks, thanks to God the Father for each other in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and submitting to one another out of reverence of Christ. To one another. To one another. It's not saying submitting only to your pastor. There, I think there's a misunderstanding because of the way we structure our mm-hmm. congregations that make us believe that this thing called pastor is somewhere in the heavenlies and not right down there with the average churchgoer that yeah. the pastor hears God in a, in a, in a, in a more intimate way than the average churchgoer that because of this position, they have special authority. No, they have the responsibility to have to make those hard decisions when it comes down to it. Yeah. But it seems like that is the, outlying example of the role that is the exception to the rule that they have to make authoritative decisions and it seems like when they make those authoritative (coughs) authoritative decisions that it's supposed to be done in a plurality it's supposed to be done with let's say let's use a random number eight elders all coming together to agree upon and make this decision to take someone out of the church or, or any other decision about yeah. what doctrine is right. And I think this may be a, a little veering yeah. off of path a bit, but um, I- entering into the church world and starting to hear how some churches operate and stuff. I remember the first time I heard someone say um, that they were going to submit a resume to a church to go work for that church. And I, I felt like I was going crazy. <laughs> I was like, are you serious? Yeah. Are there not, are there not, People, people of among, inte- yeah, yeah, people of integrity who understand the Bible in that church that they can elevate, and it seems like what the Bible describes is there's a, there's a person of integrity that the church trusts, that they love, that um, that understands the Scripture, um, that the people invest their trust into someone, and they say we 
choose to follow you because we know you, we trust you, we believe, we've seen your life. It's a community thing. Yeah. It's a community effort that the the community invests their trust into one of their own to to lead them or yeah. to many of their own to lead them. These are the men that we know we can trust. Instead of bringing in a guy who has a vision, has skills, can speak really well, and this is the guy we want to lead our church. But you never met him. You don't know him from Adam, you know? That's my soapbox. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. and I think just in total, we could say this a lot about a lot of things, but for sure about this issue, uh, that we use our experience as the glasses to read our Bible. Yeah. So when we read pastor in the Bible, we're seeing it through our experience of pastors in our church, instead of letting the Bible be the glasses that we view our experience. Yeah. When I look at my pastor, am I seeing what the Bible describes as a pastor? Yeah. Or when I look at my pastor, am I seeing, you know, what, I mean? yeah. uh, what the world tells me or what, you know, a CEO, is that is that what I see when I see my pastor or do I see what the Bible describes? 